Come on, we're getting closer. Welcome to the region airs, the quiz show that's as dotty as a stotty, as barmo as a parmo, and as packed with jokes that are weaker than Earl Grey tea. My name's Simon Donald, and we have two teams who will face five rounds of questions all about the region. On my right is team captain Catboy, and his guest this week is comedian Anvil Springsteen. Newcastle-based scouser Anvil was given his name when his act was smashing concrete slabs on his chest. He now just cracks mirrors with his face. <laughs> Gavin Webster's guest this week is Bob Johnson. It's a little-known fact that Bob is TV's shortest weatherman. To reach his map, he has to stand on a thick plank, but at least that gives Anvil a day job. <laughs> and here comes our first round beyond regional doubt. Can the teams solve our humdrum conundrum? Three clues to each team, which should lead them to the name of a famous Northeasterner, Catboy and Anvil. OK, for your first point, in 2003, an unfortunate oversight resulted in two different versions of the same show being performed in Newcastle and Sunderland. Name the show. It's a theatre show. It's a theatre no, no, show that went on in Newcastle and in Sunderland at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> it was an oversight. It's two versions of the same show. Is it a tale of two cities? <laughs> that, that's a good one, but it's not the answer. But it does deserve a point, though, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, that does. I think it that's does. one of the best things anyone said. Yeah, that does On deserve a point. Show, it's a point for that. <laughs> uh, but at the same time, I'll pass it over and see if the other team can actually steal the answer. Um, it's not the black and white minstrel show in Newcastle, and it became the red and white minstrel show That's pretty good, Sunderland, that. Didn't it? Give Bob a point for Shall that as well. Oh, The answer <laughs> you know. for... Catboy, but not for a point, is that it was the Nutcracker. OK, oh, and your visual clue nutcracker. is a Nutcracker. Ouch. <clears throat> uh, Excuse me, How that's... has Annick Castle become internationally known? This is for your second clue. <clears throat> um, how has Annick Castle become internationally known? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What, you mean the Duke it? sold it? Yeah. <laughs> postcards. Postcards yeah. sent abroad by people. <laughs> What do you mean? How We're looking for something a lot for, for bigger, a, reason, a, lot a specific reason. For one speci very specific reason. Harry reason. Potter. Harry Potter, oh. you're right. Really? Um, what, what, what was it in Harry Potter, do you know? A uh, castle. School. <laughs> <laughs> it was... Um, school. Hogwarts, Hogwarts, I believe. School. school. Okay, so that, there is your clue, which is the movies, right? For your third question, how are James Stewart, Philip, Joseph, William, Fenwick, Cuthbert, Elizabeth and King James also known. The potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> they might be potatoes, might they? No ideas? I'll pass it over if you've got no ideas. Have a guess. Are they royalty? Well, I suspect that they are things that are named after things including royalty. It's... Are they all known as Jimmy? No, they are things that are known as these names that I've just read out to you. <laughs> <coughs> no? No guess? No idea. Nothing? Okay, we'll pass it over. Is it the fireman on Trumpton? No, that was Hugh. Oh, Hugh, Hugh Van McGrew, Cuthbert, Cuthbert Dibble. Dibble. Yeah, no, it wasn't really. I'm just trying to get a laugh. Uh, it you wasn't. It? <laughs> it, it was, it, they weren't all saints, though. I haven't heard of a saint's chirp, but, I mean, were, were there saints in Cuthbert, St. James, and Philip? Um, um, they're not, but it's... It, is it Taunton? You're getting close. Really? Only in the Scottish connection. <laughs> so, <laughs> what? Is it drunkenness? <laughs> <laughs> James, James. <laughs> <laughs> um, Do you want me to tell you? Yeah. Go on, you might as well. OK, well, I'll tell Catboy's team, because the clue's actually for them. They are the Bells of Berwick in Berwick-upon-Tweed. Oh. No, I didn't know about them either. <laughs> right, um, <laughs> there's your Ding three clues. <laughs> OK, <laughs> can you put those together to make the name of one famous northeastern person? Famous Northeast person. Oh, yeah, I got it. What is it? It's Jamie Bell. What, did Jamie Bell get, get his nuts cracked? Well, <laughs> yeah. Well, explain good Jamie why, Bell. explain why. 
Nutcracker because he uh, became a ponce and started doing ballet <laughs> instead of doing a hard man sport up here. Uh, yeah. Movies because you're in that film, whatever it was called. And Bell because that's his name. name. He's the correct answer, <laughs> Jamie <Okay>. Bell. <laughs> Jamie Bell was the Billingham star of the ballet hit flick Billy Elliot. The Bells of Berwick are named after all of the people who have famous ties with Berwick, all eight of them. <laughs> the King James Bell was rung to inform of a local death. Cuthbert the Bell is still told once annually to announce Shrove Tuesday, and the Fenwick Bell is told at 4.57 every weekday, followed by a tannoy announcement that the store will be closing shortly. <laughs> right, Gavin and Bob, let's start you off on your Beyond Regional Doubt questions. Uh, which author married a South Shields poet in 1936? She was, the poet was called Eileen O'Shaughnessy. In the 30s? Um, one of the, I would say, probably one of the most significant authors of the 20th century. Really? Mm -hmm. uh, ooh, um, ooh. Uh, <laughs> at, at, is it phew, George Orwell or something like that? Is, or, or, um, it doesn't come George from. Orwell. It is George Orwell. Yes. Really, well done. <laughs> so that's one point and your visual clue, George Orwell. Okay, and your next one for your next point. Orwell wrote 1984. What happened to York Minster in that year? Oh, it got converted into a roller disco. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody wore leg warmers. Uh, well, no, it got, yeah. Got That's not on my yeah, heart, yeah, yeah. Then everybody wore yeah. leg warmers. <laughs> Bob was quite right. It was struck well done, by lightning Bob. and it caught fire. So your clue is a firefighter. And your next question. Liverpool. <laughs> will hold the title European City of Culture in 2008, but where did Newcastle Gateshead come in the bidding race? Uh, well, it, they were the, uh, the runners-up, weren't they? Is that what you're giving me? That's what I'm giving you. OK. Well, <laughs> runner-up is the correct <laughs> answer. Put them together to Nobody make from one Gateshead's famous North Eastern person. What, oh, sorry, we're on this bit now. Yes, this is the bit the, where you uh, have to jo answer questions. Jojo will firefight that in the runner-up. Um, yeah, I know this, I think. Didn't that fireman, um, he was a runner-up in Big Brother, wasn't uh, he? Johnny Regan. Oh. Really? And... Yeah. And he's, he obviously is very literary. Can you put all the connections watch the program. together? <laughs> oh, he was Can always you? quoting Orwell, you know, in the program. Can you tell us what that Orwell connection is? Oh, I'm not sure. It must be um, like... Um, was well, it's he... Big Brother, isn't it, right? You've got... Oh, yeah, yeah, Big Brother, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah that's yeah, right. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> TV loser Johnny Regan from County Durham was the right answer. Cheeky joker Johnny was runner-up on Big Brother. The term Big Brother became well known after George Orwell penned the book 1984 about an all-seeing totalitarian government. He was also behind Animal Farm, a modern fable attacking Stalinism. Although that's obviously a metaphor as I've seen the video and it's all about a bird performing unthinkable acts on a donkey. <laughs> Uh, Johnny's not our only runner-up. Newcastle Gate said bid for the City of Culture was stolen from us by the Scousers. Uh, it remains to be seen if they sell it for heroin. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's time to discover who is top of the Vox Pops as we go out on the road with our man in the gutter, Mr. Arthur Two-Stroke. I'm in Spennymoor, Region Airs, the home of Bobby Shafto. Bobby Shafto went to see, but to see what? I have 2020 vision, but what about the people of Spennymoor? Let's find out with my magic eye picture. Understand how this works? Not really. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Arthur Two Stroke yep. will be asking. The people of Spennymoor, if they can see the hidden image in a magic eye picture, he's asked five people how many out of the five get the right answer. And oh, we just got to guess how many? Yeah. Spennymoor, none. <laughs> Are you sticking with that? <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to say. <laughs> I don't know why, but we're losing this round every time. So. All right, so you're going you're gonna to say zero. Zero. All right. right. Yeah. right. Um, I think we'll go for one. You're going to go for one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's find out who got it right. 
I'm going to ask you to look at this magic eye picture. Can you tell me if you can see what's inside the picture? Yes, I have, have, have a look. Take your time now. Can, can you see no, what's hidden inside there? I can't, no. It's How beyond... much do we get for this interview? <laughs> <laughs> I might be able to get the cameraman to give you a kiss. Oh, that'll do. Oh. <laughs> What's this place called again? Spennymore. I Spennymore, that's right. Let your eyes go out of focus. No, I can't see anything. Can you see anything at all? Just flowers. Look deeply into it. They get hypnotised if you're looking at it long enough. Can you see anything? No. Butterflies. No. Butterflies. <laughs> My eyesight must be not so good after go. What about your hearing? Do you watch the telly with your glasses on? No. Yes, sorry, yes, I do. You get, no, it's him giving us a, going to give us a kiss that I'm thinking about. I know, that's the bit I'm waiting for as well. I can see three butterflies. Do I get me a kiss? Yeah, kiss now. Gavin and Bob, not a spenny more, not a spenny less. You got it bang on. One yeah. person saw the magic eye picture. So going into the break, Gavin, you are thundering ahead on six points. Welcome back to the Region Airs and our Mr. Region Round with our special guest, Mr. X. The teams must work out who he is and what he's done. Mr. X, <laughs> are, are, you, are you a porn star? No. 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 Mr. X is not a porn star. Good. That narrows it down. <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did you move around in your job, Mr. X? All depends. In a, in, in a vehicle of some sort? Are you yeah. going to say yes or no? Yes. Yeah. Yes to that one. Mr X, would your claim to fame have got you on That's Life 15 years ago? Is it that kind of claim to fame? No. Stupid. Yeah. <laughs> I think my, my sort of <laughs> Mr X, have That's you just had a stroke? <laughs> <laughs> Mr X, are you a Stephen Burkoff standing? No. <clears throat> no. Anyone want a clue? Please. <laughs> Bob's itching behind you. You want to come flab? Come flab. We should see a doctor about it. Come <laughs> <laughs> uh, on. Are you going to ask a question, Gav, or do you want a clue? I want a clue first, then yeah. I'll ask a question. Oh, That's that the logical way to do things. I thought that was a clue. Bob's itching. I thought I was totally. <laughs> <laughs> no, right. Forget that one. He really thought you were itching, Bob. <laughs> Are you going to ask a question, Gav? Can, can I have a clue first? Yes. Can I have a Clue first. Well, and this flipped. is the clue, and here it is, and it's the next thing I'm going to say, and it starts when I say Mr. X. Mm -hmm. Mr. X was arrested immediately after his moment of infamy. Ooh. Mr. X, were you a streaker? That is, no. he's, he's still got a question. Still got a question. That don't count. <coughs> so the streaker <coughs> question's out. Um, uh, oh, Mr. X, was this... Uh, did, did your claim to fame happen during the sporting event? No. No. <laughs> He's still not forgiving me for that arrested? stroke lane, has he really? <laughs> so you got arrested, so this is, this is your field, really. <laughs> <laughs> He's a fellow criminal. <clears throat> Mr. Mr. X, when you were arrested, was it for some kind of, like, uh, exposing yourself in some kind of manner? No, no. No? You're obsessed with that, aren't you? You, you said you were driving around, Mr. X. You, you weren't driving a, a getaway car for some gang or other? No. <laughs> um. Were you driving a clown car? <laughs> Do you want another clue? And you were arrested because it failed its <clears throat> MOT because doors fell on it. <laughs> Do you want... Yeah, a clue would be One nice. more clue, right. Mr X couldn't borrow bail money from his bank. Oh, God. Oh, Mr X! Ah, oh, that Mr X! Is it... It's Mr Garth X, did Garth you, um... Spray think, did you spray shit all over the bank <laughs> with your, um, combine harvester? Oh, well, well, not no. the combine harvester, right, but the, the um, smoke spreader. spreader. Yeah. Yeah! yeah well yeah. done. Yeah. Yeah, you know, that's where the cookie crumbles, yeah. Yeah. Our guest is indeed David Cannon, the farmer who had a row with his bank and covered the place with manure. It's all described in detail in David's book, Loose Cannon, which is now on sale. <laughs> David's bank is now a trendy drinking hole. 
So there was one shit on the walls outside, and now there's people on the piss inside. <laughs> Time now for Arthur Two Strokes. Benny Moore isn't the only place that's given him a warm unwelcome. Where is he now? Start spreading the news. I've arrived here today. <laughs> yes, Regionaires. I'm in New York, the city that never sleeps. Probably due to somebody's car alarm going off all night long. Regionaires. I'm here to find out just how much sleep those poor New Yorkers get by asking them whether or not they had more or less than the eight hours recommended kit last night. Regionaires, this is the core of my Big Apple question. OK, let's put this question to bed. How many <coughs> out of nine New Yorkers got less than eight hours sleep last night? Oh, it's a New Yorker thing. Yeah, Apple, would, do you want them to guess yeah. first? Yeah. Are we going to go first again? Do you want to go? Yeah, go on, go well, first. Yeah, well, I would have nine, did you say? Out of Four nine. Four and a half. I'd had more than how many hours sleep, did you say? More than eight more hours. Than eight hours. Actually, we're asking eight. how many had less than eight then hours sleep. All right, well, to a maximum of nine. Seven. Yeah, I would say about seven yeah. as well. We'll go for about um, uh, seven. seven. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> about seven? Are you going to uh, go so for exactly we'll go for, seven? We'll go for, no, actually, I think, uh, can I just... Because you, I've you're the captain. Quite a bit. Yeah. We'll, we'll, and you've rule. got the answer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll, can we go for six? We'll yeah. go for well, six. Go for, six. Go for you. You go sure? for six. Yeah. Okay. Are you sure? Yeah. That's good. Right. No, no. Like to, just you right. the well, it's New York, isn't it? And, it's, and there's there's a lot of old people in in New York, and they always get up to go to the loo, don't they? <laughs> no, they do, don't they? They get up early, right? <laughs> Where they go to bed. Going right? higher or lower then? No. Should we go higher? I think we should go seven. <sighs> you going to go seven? <gasps> yeah. Because I'm out to lose today. You're you're yeah. the, you're the captain. Okay. We're going to take seven from you. Let's go back and see. Did you get more than eight hours sleep last night? No. I got about three. About four hours. What was the reason for that? Me baby daughter was up all night. Yes. You notice oh. in New York nobody seems to be up. Be up. Oh. Oh, well, a lot of old people on there, you know. Ah, I see. I'm, so. a, I'm a young 72. Right. <laughs> well, you don't look it. Did you get more than eight hours sleep last night? Yes, definitely, yeah. You, and you live in Harlem? Harlem. New yeah. York? Yeah, I do. I got about seven hours sleep last night. <laughs> so is that a yes or a That would be... Is that a yes or a no? Seven? Seven hours sleep, that's a yes. Less than eight. I got, I got less than eight hours sleep last night, yes. Just under, I would think, about seven. Yes, about the same, yes. Less. Less. A lot less. <laughs> got two children, I can't get much sleep with two children. <laughs> oh, wonderful eyes your wife's got. They're so beautiful. <laughs> so, eight of them had less than eight hours sleep, which means Catboy and Anvil win the point because you're only one out. Yeah, so, thank you very much. Thank you. Well, very much. <clears throat> Good first time. Good first time. And wasn't that like there was pensioners, a lot of pensioners in New York? It's now And, and apparently a 12-year-old boy with a young baby. <laughs> it's like home from home for you, really. <laughs> <laughs> time for the quickfire round, which is called the Nether Region. So, just like the Newcastle Gateshead slogan, you can buzz in whenever you like. <laughs> OK, first on the buzzer gets the point. Are you ready? Yeah. Where did the Beatles write, She Loves You? In a hotel in Newcastle. It was. It was the Imperial Hotel. Tan Hill in North Yorkshire has the highest what in England? Pub. Correct. <laughs> Northumberland County Court is not in Northumberland. Where is it? In Newcastle. It is. It's in Newcastle. Tyne T's first broadcast its news programme today at six in 1969. What made it special? It was on that day at six. Didn't make... Oh. <laughs> they were a dog on a skateboard. Last story. It was in colour. Where did Ian Duncan Smith say, it's great to be in Newcastle, your football team are great? Sunderland. Sunderland, that's <laughs> it. <laughs> Where on the northeast coast are Craster Kippers smoked? Craster. 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 <laughs> Bob gets the point. No, this doesn't work. Motorcycles. Oh, do you <laughs> it's because yeah. he pressed it first. Motorcycles 40p, cars 80p, anything over 30 hundred weight, one pound 80. Uh, tank tunnel? It's not. I've got to pass it over. 
You see that transport bridge? Transport this bridge. is the middle of the transport Sorry, bridge. Yeah. I want to find whores. Where should I go? <laughs> Middlesbrough. <laughs> uh, you know, it's a fact. It's not. I've got to pass it over. <laughs> it is, isn't it? It's back at the station, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, knows that. Yeah. You know that. It's, still <laughs> it's in the Yorkshire Dales. Man landed on the moon in 1969, but in the northeast, a journey into space began in 1927. Uh, Newcastle Bronio. That is correct. <laughs> Who was Britain's only track and field medalist in the 1976 Olympics? Brendan Foster. Brendan Foster, that's correct. In what year did Sunderland become a city? Very undeservedly, 1982. <laughs> 1982 <laughs> that's just a joke. 62% of people in Northumberland are what? Sheep. Inbred. <laughs> <laughs> Not watching this, along with the other 38. <laughs> it's of working age, oh. interestingly enough. Tyne Tees Television... No, sorry, Tyne... Tees Valley Council claim that Middlesbrough has more what than Gateshead's Metro Centre? Shoplifters. <laughs> <laughs> it's to do with shopping. Shops? Oh, it's not. It's specifically shopping floor space. Uh, they're square, <laughs> and North Yorkshire has over 3,000 of them. What? What was the question? Say it again. Miles. All right. Uh, I was surprised so much drunkenness, cursing and swearing, even from the mouths of little children. John Wesley. John Wesley on a visit to Newcastle. Yeah. Who invented the steam turbine? Oh, Parsons. Uh, yeah, Charlie Parsons. Is it? Yeah. Charlie Parsons. Charles yeah, Parsons. Yeah. In what year did Sunderland's last shipyard close? 94? Two? Eight? I'm yeah. passing it over. <laughs> Two eight. Eight. Yeah, eight, I think, isn't it? 98. 98. It was 88. Uh, what instrument does Northumbrian piper Catherine Tickell play? Northumberland pipes. <laughs> Very cleverly spotted. <laughs> Which football club plays at Victoria Park? Hartlepool United. That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> Please. We need to complain about the buses. So, the time's up, and the final score is a quite remarkable five to Catboy um, and 19 to Gav. What can we say? <laughs> So, Cheryl Tweedy's latest release to our winners and the cost of her bail for that release to our losers. <laughs> Many thanks to Anvil Springsteen and the legendary Bob Johnson for coming in. I'm Simon Donald and this bollocks was the region airs. Good night. <laughs>